Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video is part 49 in the Slither series. This is a 1969 Mach 1 Cobra Jet that I'm rebuilding from some original parts and a lot of Dynacorn parts. Now in previous videos, I went through a whole bunch of steps of building the car up, putting it on my jig, and making sure everything fits and lines up, and I'm continuing to do that. I'm transitioning into what I call paint phase. So most of the heavy work has been done to this car, and I'm starting to do prep work to get epoxy on it and stuff like that. So some of the things I need to do is finish stripping the right front fender, which I am doing, and also I need to verify some other pieces and parts. I need to make sure that this door is going to fit properly. I need to strip the rest of that door. I need to strip the inside of the driver's door and this passenger door. Also make sure the hinges are all in good shape as I believe they are. Um, but I ran into a problem. I always tell people, test fit, test fit, test fit, right? Well, there's a piece that I did not test fit and I am going to have to address that. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. I'm also going to show you something with the deck lid. Now, I showed the earlier video where I put the Mustang letters or the holes for the Mustang letters on the back of the new deck lid. And I pointed out that the peak of that deck lid did not look correct. I'm going to show you how I'm going to determine whether it is or not. Part of the problem is the extensions that go on each side above the taillights interact with the deck lid. And if those don't look right, the whole thing doesn't look right, at least in my opinion. So I'm going to show you some details on that as well. Let's take a look at the problem that I ran into. Thankfully, before I ever got to primer or paint phase. Okay, here we are on the driver's side quarter panel. And of course, this is a Dynacorn panel. Now somebody had warned me that there was a problem with this opening and how the vent piece would fit into that opening. And I thought, well, it looks pretty accurate. Let's take a look at it and see what I've come up with. Now, this is the original vent opening piece from the Cobra Jet. So you can see it needs, it needs some help. And I may or may not be actually using these, depending on if I find more corrosion. I have another set of originals to go with this. So I set this in place and put it on the plate that's inside. There is definitely a problem. It does not sit far enough aft. And what I mean by that, there's a flange in here, a recess, that this needs to sit into. Along with that, there is now a gap at the top and the bottom of this piece, and it's supposed to fit flush. So let me show you on the original quarter panel what it should look like. So here's the original panel. Here is the recess that I was talking about. And you can even see the witness mark of where this piece sat. Now this should sit right in there pretty easily. And it does. But you can see here, there's actually a gap. You can move this a little bit back and forth, but there is a gap here and this thing sits totally flush all along the perimeter. And why is it not correct? Well, there's a few things. So I've done some measuring, and essentially this opening, if I go from the center to, let's say the center line of this opening, we're at nine and a half inches. And that is exactly the same as what they have on the Dynacorn piece. However, this plate is, in this quarter panel, is just a little past zero, meaning it's forward just a little bit. On the Dynacorn part, this is much further forward. Also, on this piece, you have this little relief area, this little space between this recess and this flat portion. And this is not covering that up. So if I measure, and I can do this a few different ways, if I measure from the center line of this hole to, if I stay in line with this one, so if I do it kind of like this, I see seven, whoops, I see seven, basically seven inches on the top. If I come to the bottom and I do the same thing, it's around six, 
maybe six and a half, a little under six and a half. So the whole location is different. I'm going to show you on the other car, on the panel, uh, of where this plate sits. Let's take a look at the other car. Okay, so as I had mentioned, if I come straight across, let me turn it, let me go this way. If I went straight from this edge to over here on this center, basically center line, that's nine and a half, so that's correct. Now, I think I said the upper one, if I go from the center to the edge and I try to stay on line with this hole, it's six and a half. It's roughly six and a half inches. If I do that on the bottom, it's six inches. So these holes are in the wrong location. This recess area is now covered up by this plate. So what does that mean? Well, it means I got to take this plate loose and move it aft. Also, this part of the quarter, I don't believe, you know, I don't know if I want to cut this loose just yet. I'll have to do some measuring, but this seems to be angled forward more than where it should be. So it may be that I take these spot welds loose, kind of push this back into place, and then re-tack this back onto the car. It's critical that you do these sort of things before you start putting primer and paint on a vehicle. So with the back of the car relatively stripped, I decided to move on to this right front fender. So I was taking the SCT and removing the primer that I can, you know, was coming off pretty easily up here on the top edge of the fender. And then I got all the way at the top and I found body filler. Now, this is several different types of body filler. So you've got kind of a yellowish and then the green. So I'm going to have to strip all that off, obviously. I wasn't really expecting that, but I also didn't expect to find it on this fender, even though overall it's a really good fender as well, just with some minor dents and dings in it. So I will continue to strip this off. I also need to clean up the inside, make sure that's going to be exposed and not have any problems and remove any kind of rust from the bottom of that. But uh, we'll see what I end up with. You know, these fenders are so thin, and this panel area is so flat, that it doesn't have a lot of strength. You know, if they were, um, if they had some sort of curve anywhere, this, this area would be a lot stronger. Now, this, this isn't bad. I don't know why they use so much filler, but it's, 
I can feel there's a low spot here, here, a little bit along in here. So, you know, sometimes you have to do that. You have to, you can't just fill up one little spot. You gotta fill it and make it big so that it transitions out. But it is a solid fender, I'll give them that. It is solid. Okay, so we have the aftermarket deck lid and the non-usable original deck lid. But it can still be used for something, and that would be this, right? So you look at this shape, and you look at this shape, and you want to do a comparison. And I still think this one is a little bit rounder than what this one is. So if I take this contour gauge, and I'm just going to come straight, I don't want to do this, I'm going to come straight in like this. And I'm about you know, a little over an inch inside of this one. Let's see if I can replicate that. And you can see there is a difference. That, that peak is not the same. In fact, I have to kind of come wait. You can see, I don't know if you, hopefully you can see that okay. Let me get a light. So if I put this on here and bring the light in, hopefully you can see that okay. I can't really tell on the camera if it's showing up as well, but there's definitely a difference in that shape. Especially as you come out here towards the end, it's even it's even rounder. Now, I mentioned that it's possible that I could uh, weld a rod or something on top of the, the new one. I don't think I'm going to do that. It's not enough to weld that on and then have to reshape everything. So it may take, you see how well that, hopefully you can see how well that fits right on there. Um, it may take a little filler to shape that to match. And again, it's just it's a small detail. But whenever you put the extensions up, there is a difference in how this looks. Let me grab one of those. So I'll put the extension up. And you should be able to see right there. That's my that's my finger catching the corner instead of sitting up even with it. And you can't just reshape this with bending something. It's not going to work. Let me show you from the opposite angle. So we'll see if this shows up. But there, Maybe you can see it there. There is... Everything else is really, really good. But it's just that peak. This is too round. So, it'll probably take a little filler May use some fiberglass uh, reinforced. I don't know yet, but I've got to get this. I've got to get this shape right. All right. I know this video is kind of like all over the place, right? But there are things that need to be addressed before I can do all the things that I want to do. Part of that is, you know, I cut the hole in this hood back here, and that matches the hood that I have sitting to my right, which I'll show you in just a second. One of the things that I need to address, at least to some level, is the holes for the pins. Now, I don't know how they would have done it at the factory if they would have put the pins in and then brought the hood down and made contact and then taken it up and drilled a hole, or if they had a template and they put the hole in place and then put the pin through the hole to get it to line up on the core support because the hole is there for the core support. There's some play in that hole, but there's no play basically where it comes through the hood. So I'm going to try a couple different things here to determine where I'm at. As I look at this, you know, you've got a straight edge over here and you've got a straight edge there, but you also have a center line. So if this is centered on the car, the way it's supposed to be, this center line should be the same side to side, the way I look at it. And the reality is, if I put this on 
the center of that. This hole is basically 14 and a quarter. Just a, just a hair over 14 and a quarter. I can't say it's 5 sixteenths. Uh, so, I don't know, 9 30 seconds? Something along those lines. But just a little over 14 and a quarter. The same way if I go this direction, essentially it's 14 and a quarter. Now, um, I think I have the pins for this somewhere. Let me, let me look and see if I can find those. Ta-da! Okay. This pin has a huge amount of play. Like, you can see that the pin itself, I'm not going to get out a caliper, I'm going to just kind of measure it, is basically a half inch. Maybe just a hair under one half inch. The hole here is probably three quarters. Actually, it's uh, close to seven eighths. So that's a huge amount of play in that hole. I was a little concerned. I didn't think about this uh, initially that this was that small. So I think I'll be good if I do the same thing. I measure from the center to the center of the hole, make a 14 inch uh, location. I may go from the back of the hood instead of the front simply because this is on a taper here and the back is a little more square, let's say. So I will do that. I'll get a dimension this way, I'll try to get a dimension this way, and then one from the back and replicate that on the other hood. So the measurement I came up with from the back edge here is 44 and 7 eighths. So I'm just going to do a rough, just a quick rough uh, measurement on that. And it doesn't have to be exact right now. And it would be helpful if the tape would stay. <laughs> and I had it on the other end. I could put my foot against it. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. 44 and about seven eighths. So now I can come across from the center, roughly, and do the 14 and a quarter. Forty-four and seven eighths, approximately. Wow, that's really, really. I was like spot on. Okay, so 14 and a quarter. Now, the other thing with this is on the other side of this hood, there is an existing hole. There's already relief made. Uh, I'll show you on the other one. I don't want to flip this over, but I'll show you on the other one. Now, that is not centered on the opening. You can see it's offset. And the other one it's actually more centered on the opening. Now the implication is when they made these there was some variable. You know this this main hole could be probably stamped a little bit off either side. I don't know. I'm not going to measure any of that. All I need to know is where the main pinhole is on these. I still can't get over how bad this hood is. I mean there's... <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> So, if I come underneath of this hood, if I can show, oh, there it is, right there. So there's the one hole. And there's the other. So they had already planned on these cars potentially having hood pins. Now all I have to do is drill some holes. I don't want to, I don't know that I'll necessarily go to the same size just yet. I haven't decided yet. Um, I may just do a, an initial hole and whenever I mock up everything, get the hood on the car exactly where it needs to fit and all that, I can put some pins in the core support and come down and see just how close this is. So I may end up just drilling like a quarter inch hole or something just to give me a start point. Of course, I will verify my measurements once again, 
before I do any of that. So a little clarification. I did drill the hole. Not very big, but it was 44 and 5 eighths, not 7 eighths from the back when I squared everything up. And it was still 14 and a quarter from center line to the hole. So, other than doing it like I was saying before, if you had one of these and you had the pins, you could bring the hood down, kind of push on a little bit or put some marker on there and push down on the pins to indicate where they actually go. Now, there's a few things I still need to do to this. There's some damage up here. I'll probably have to weld shut that hole. Some of these dents, I'm just, I can't do anything about them. They're inside, or there's no access to them. You know, it's a solid channel piece inside of there. Uh, not that that's a big deal. That's just a little bit of filler. Take care of that. A little bit out here to address these areas, but otherwise it's a good hood, and just got to doctor it up a little bit. All right, so I'm doing prep work on the main body, and part of that is the seams where the roof meets the A-pillar and the roof meets the quarter. And as you probably already know, I welded plates into this to fill up most of the gap. This was too thin to put a plate in there, so this is just a normal kind of overlap. I cleaned these, I sanded them out with 80 grit to give them some texture. And of course I uh, cleaned these out with lacquer thinner all the way around. What I intend to use is some of this contour aluminum filled compound from Eastwood. In their advertising, they point out specifically a uniquely a unique, let's see, a uniquely formulated filler fortified with aluminum for strength, corrosion resistance, and durability, used to repair factory leaded seams and high strength applications, as well as any areas prone to moisture. So its corrosion resistant properties prevent rust from coming through the repair. Apply directly to metal and easily top coats with Eastwood's glazing putty. So the way this works is it's like normal filler, I guess, but it mix it, I think 80-20, and then it'll be applied to these areas. You know, we've talked about this before. This would have had lead, and I can show you in the other Mach 1. Uh, this would have been a lead seam. I don't do lead. I've never experimented with lead, and I don't really want to. And if this will work, which I think it should, because that's how what it's designed to do, then that's what I'm using. So here is the other Mach 1, and you can see the line of the lead that's still in there and that's going to stay. I'm not taking that out. I made a mistake. I read this wrong. It says thoroughly mixed desired amount of material with 2% cream hardener. Not 80-20, 2%. <laughs> right. so open this up and you'll see it looks like aluminum. I mean pretty much just looks like aluminum. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to stir this up a little bit. It doesn't necessarily say to do that, uh, but it doesn't hurt to make sure this is all mixed correctly or mixed together. And I try not to get excess on the lid or the gap just to help keep it from gumming up. So it stirs, it's, it's pretty thick, um, feels kind of, uh, well, thicker than, uh, not as thick as peanut butter, but pretty thick. So I want to make sure this is all mixed up real good, have a consistent color, no, no uh, heavy elements stuck to the bottom of the can type of thing. And it's got a pretty strong smell like filler normally does. Now that looks a lot more consistent. So what I'm going to do is use 
my paint stick here to get material out. The thing is, it's not going to take like a whole lot of this uh, because I'm not trying to necessarily fill it up completely as I am just trying to create a good base for the next application of filler. But I need to have enough to do all four segments. We'll see how far this will go. Now the tricky part is the 2%. right? Um, I did experiment with this uh, earlier just to see what how it would react with the uh, the hardener. The difficulty is there's no color change. You know, with normal fillers, you you get some sort of a color change, and this one you really didn't. So set this aside. Here's the hardener. Now I ordered this off of I actually ordered this off of Amazon. I think it was like I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll, figure, I'll figure out what the price was and I'll put it in the in the title whatever down here um, so I ordered this and it showed up and this was damaged so you can see there's some blue showing right there uh, I contacted them through Amazon because this was actually sent directly from Eastwood but using their Amazon connection so I contacted them through Amazon and they're going to send me another tube because I don't know if this is going to be a problem but I'm basing it on how often am I going to be able to use this so here we have a wad of material. I can't tell you what 2% is, right? If you were to divide this into 100 segments, well, it'd be two segments, but I don't really have that. Normally when I do filler, uh, I do across the top with a, with a streak. Is that 2%? I don't know. I mean, how else do you do it? Do you, do you weigh it? I don't know. I'm going to add a little bit extra. Just because. So, mix this stuff up. And I'm using these clean sheets, by the way. A lot of the stuff I show you is available on my Amazon page. So if you haven't done that already, there's a link in the description below. You can find a lot of the products that I put on or use on the cars is already listed in Amazon. So like these clean sheets, incredible. Saves you a lot of time and just not having to find something to mix up on. Now you can see this is not, there's no color change. So you've got to be very thorough in mixing this up. And at this point, this is very smooth. Like in the can, it feels he heavy and thick, but out here, this is thinner or feels almost runny in a sense uh, like more than regular body filler. So I don't want to pile this up and have it sag, but I also need to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Okay, I'm going to keep mixing this and we're going to take it back and put it on the car. So again, no color change. Can't see any color change. So you really got to be cautious mixing this stuff up. I'm guessing that's good enough because I don't really know I can't tell no color change so And like I said, it's really 
really smooth. So you gotta be extra careful with your with your how much weight you're putting on your blade. As I can see it just it just wants to push out real easy. I may just leave that at that because I don't want to get too uh, too carried away. See how much I have left. Okay, I'm going to do the other corner and then come back. So this is the second round of the Evercoat aluminum. I'm not sure I'm, uh, you know what, it's not ready yet. So I let this stuff sit overnight. I've got some 100 grit on a Durablock and all I want to do is just kind of knock this down. Now, I want to point out something as well. This is not what I'm using as a final product. I am going to cover all of this with a, the Rage Ultra, so just keep that in mind. Let's just see how, what it does. That's pretty much exactly what I wanted it to do. Build this up to where I can skim over it with the Rage. This does actually smooth out pretty decent. I know it mentions on the can about going over this with their um, their glaze putty, but I don't use that stuff. I use the uh, regular putty. I 
actually do want it to just have a subtle dip to it. So like I said, this is pretty much exactly what I wanted to do. We just have some texture here. Now the plan will be to sand this midsection, scuff it up, make sure all the dust is blown out, and this will get a top coat with the Rage Ultra. And that's gonna take care of the bulk of this. Now, sometimes you'll use like a straight edge so you can see the dip. I can feel it with my hand, so I know it's there. Up here on top, this is actually almost dead on. So, I'm going to continue working on the rest of the car, but that may be it for this particular video. So there's a lot more to do. Obviously, I've got to sand down the other parts of the car, the A-pillars in the front, the sail panel on the other side. I've got to add more filler to that, smooth that up. The car's going to get epoxy on it, so I need to finish stripping the underside of the deck lid, and I need to also strip the backside of the fenders over there. They have some surface rust on those, so I need to prep those. Now the sequence is going to be a little interesting. What I have to do is epoxy both doors, inner and outer. So it's possible I can do one at a time and put it on one of my stands, or I may just do the outsides and then do the insides later. The whole body needs to be sprayed with epoxy. So I'll have to tape off all the door openings, the window openings, because I don't want to get overspray on the interior of the red stuff. So there's a lot of little details, things that are going to have to happen. Let me get out of the paint booth. No echo out here. So uh, I'm going to continue to make uh, progress on the Cobra Jet, obviously. And there's, like I said, there's a lot of detail things to do. One of my next videos, I'm going to show the RivNut tool that I bought because I want to put rib nuts in the doors before I do any paintwork. I want to make sure those are in the right location. The Dynacorn doors do not come with the rib nuts installed. And this car, of course, had the sport mirrors. So you don't want to just put screws in there. You want to have the actual inserts. So I'll show that in my next video. But that's going to be it for this video. Uh, once again, thanks to my patrons who continue to support me and help me make these videos. If you're interested in becoming a patron, there is a link in the description below. I would appreciate it if you at least take a look at that. And that'll be it for now. So until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.